Hey there, how's everybody doing? Thank you for joining me tonight. Tune it in. Danny Thrasher says, hello. Hey, Danny, what's going on? I'm always glad to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Not much. Well, that's good. Not much is always a good thing. Alright, so hey, thanks for coming again. So tonight we're going to go ahead and pick back up where we left off last night with Wizardry 7 Crusaders of the Dark Savant. Um, last night, even though that was the second session for this game, it was really the one where um, we kind of got things rolling. The first one, uh, the first night we streamed, a lot of technical things, but uh, we imported uh, our save game from Wizardry 6 and kind of poked around with that for a minute excuse me, explored that, figured out how that worked. Um, but then last night is where we really started to pick up traction. Um, I've never started a Wizardry 7 from that starting point before. Imp having imported the game from Wizardry 6, I used an ending to Wizardry 6 that I'd never, um, I'd never saved before and used that as a starting point for this game. And it was a very different experience but last night we found ourselves back sort of at the uh, starter zone. And I'm looking forward to exploring that. Danny Thrash says, I missed the last two streams because I was already asleep. Oh no, it's okay. You can always go back and watch them if you're curious. But I think you'll notice right off the bat that this game uh, looks considerably different than uh, Bane of the Cosmic Forge. The graphics are sharper. Um, there's some functional differences, but it's pretty good stuff. It's pretty good stuff. So without any uh, more delay, let's go ahead and get this rolling here. Let's get the game started. So right off, we've got, <laughs> I got some new music. All right, let's jump right in. If the game will respond to me, come on now, let's not do this tonight. There we go. All right, let's load our file. So, last night we, um, Proceeded into the town of Nyctalinth, which is run by the uh, Tarang, or the Tirang, a uh, spider-like race of alien creatures, and um, they advised us they want us to hunt down and kill a general for another race called the Umpani, General Rodin Lawarks, and um, we were given these orders and then used their teleporter to get to New City, which is sort of the central hub for the game, uh, really, sort of a neutral area. Um, so we poked around New City for just a second, but then went out and headed down the road to an area that I know is um, the starter area for the game. So if you did not import a save game from Wizardry 6, you would start out here in the woods um, outside of a little starter dungeon. And um, that's what I want to explore, because even though our characters are level 5, they started this game at level 5 because we imported them, um, I wouldn't mind grinding another level or two. And the starter dungeon's a fantastic place to do that. So let's see if we can find it. It's been a long time since I've played this game. So some alifoots here, or bambafoots. These are bambafoots. Just some local uh, dangerous fauna. We will try to bless the party. Now, Danny, you may notice that some of our equipment from the last game moved over. Some of it didn't. It seems to be largely random uh, what moves and what doesn't. Not quite sure 
how the game determines. All right. So this is way easier than where we started uh, last night. Um, we had a couple wipes last night, actually. Because importing your game, you do sort of get a... Um, you get moved into an area that's, you know, not quite so beginner friendly. Hog beetles. Oh, these are stag weevils. So we'll put them to sleep with a poet's loot. I think we're going to have to rest after this fight, probably. Let's see. I think we can maybe take these guys out without any spells. Yeah, they're they're dying pretty quick. So again, the goal uh, right now is to wander the uh, forest outside of New City and try to find that starter dungeon I was talking about. Of course, if things go bad and we need it, I've got the official clue book for Crusaders of the Dark Savant here. But I've played this game so many times over the years, I, I don't think I'll, I'll probably need it. Aside from maybe some, some maps. We'll see. Two bugs. These are probably stag weevils as well. But this little nook that we're standing in right here, this would be a good place to stop and rest. These fights right here are so easy, it feels criminal compared to last night outside of Nyctalymph. Alright, so let's go ahead and rest up. And again, like in uh, Bane of the Cosmic Forge, whenever you rest, you run the risk of being discovered by monsters. They'll ambush your party while they sleep, and that can be bad news. Blackbirds and ravens. All right, so this time, because there is a group of three here, let's try to put them to sleep. And I think we're going to use one of Danny's spells here. Magic Missile at level 3, maybe? Oops, I would have picked the wrong one. I want to do the Ravens. There we go. So if you guys like this game, and you like the, the way it looks and sort of the aesthetic to it, there is a, an eighth wizardry game, the, the final part of this trilogy, but there's also a game that is in a way sort of a spiritual successor. Um, and some people are probably think I'm talking about Wizards and Warriors, which is a game made by the same, the same gentleman. But I'm actually talking about another game called, oh, what is it called? I can't believe I started talking about it and forget the name. Oh yeah, so this is a dangerous spot here. Before you lies a vast field of wild orchids rich in color. So this is where you'll fall asleep if you proceed too far. But the game I'm thinking of is, uh, oh man, it's got a crazy zany name and that's why it escapes me. Can we make it through the road without... Standing amidst the pungent polony poppy field, you stare agape at a large gray object which suddenly swooshes through the sky above you. You know what it is and yet it cannot be. There, far away, high and above, when a great gray flying whale. So Kyler seems pretty resistant to the orchids. And again, forgive me for not finishing that thought from earlier. All right, so let's rest here. I, I don't recall what's on the other side of the orchids here. And yes, I'm, I'm thinking about what the game is called. I'm probably going to have to open Steam to look at the name of it. But it was made by a, a fan of this game, and he spent like, I don't know, some 20 years or more building a clone of this. 
and I've never played it. Glow Moth. But they say it is ridiculously brutal and almost insane in its design. I gotta look it up. It's driving me crazy. Oh, let's see. seeing it on my list here and I don't I don't want to leave the uh, screen to look it up probably shouldn't even mention it but I'll find out before the night's over with it's uh, the re only reason I even brought it up is because it's the, the the guy who made it is a bit of a nut and uh, the whole project quite frankly is a bit nutty to try to single-handedly create a game of this magnitude So this is not where the start of dungeon is. I'm pretty positive it was back somewhere else. But I like exploring these little nooks and crannies and fleshing out the map a bit. So we're going to do this again. Let's see. Venom weevils. Oh, and only Kyler's awake, so this could be this could be tricky. But luckily, he gets multiple attacks. Come on. I'm trying to fight this guy with just one one party member. There we go. So everybody's asleep now. And because the flowers are what's put them to sleep, I cannot wake them. Settle Cat says, late to the party. Not too late, Sato. We're just exploring the outside of town from the other day. It's going pretty good, Sato. How are you? And so I'm sort of stuck here. I can't I can't move. Nobody's awake. Sato Cat says, Good, I just got home. So how long will this happen? How long will this go on for, I wonder? You slowly awaken upon the ground, knowing not how you got here. The last thing you remember was walking amongst the pretty flowers, and your eyes began to feel drowsy. So this is not the place I, yeah, yeah, it was, right? No, this was not the place that I fell asleep. Let's take another peek down here, because I really thought the starter dungeon was down here somewhere. But that that's pretty much a one-way... Let's, let's cast a few spells here. We 
Let's get a detect secret running. Let's get an enchanted blade going here. Alright. Well, so finding the starter dungeon has proven to be a bit more difficult than I recall. Uh, by the way, I do remember the name of the game now. It is Grimoire, Heralds of the Winged Exemplar. Right, so we're going to stay away from the poppies, or from the orchids, rather. And yeah, Grimoire, Herald of the Winged Exemplar is a completely insane game designed to, to mimic the, the experience that this game provides. But again, it was made by one man who, like I said, has a reputation for being a, a bit of a nut, <laughs> to say it lightly. All right. Well, let's go ahead and explore a new city, since this is sort of where our storyline was taking us anyways. A vivid red emblem has been attached to the door, the significance of which is not clear. So again, just to recap, the reason we came to New City was we were sent here by the Terang to learn information about the whereabouts of the Mpani Empire, specifically a General Rodin Lawarks, who we are supposed to assassinate to prove our loyalty. Psst. Get me out of here. Somebody behind the bars? Nothing. So this is a jail. This is a prison. Peering through the window, you see a bizarre group of savant guards. Guardians. Cold and without emotion, they are deadly serious, and they are poised to repel any possible attempt at invasion. Interesting. Yep, it's the constant place. So that is the the jailhouse. A vivid red emblem has been attached to the door. So lots of these doors with these emblems. Forbidden zone. Two vivid emblems, one red and one black, have been attached to the door. Oh, wow. All right, so let's have some fun. What do you say? Let's go ahead and save the game. Let's see if we can break in to the jail. I know not what's going to happen. It has been a good 12 years since I played this game. We'll probably die. So the door actually opens. Inside the console, your host of elite seven guards stand ready for battle. Moving swiftly, silently, and with perfect precision, they assume a massive attack formation. So we have one savant trooper and five savant guards. So remember, these guys seem to be um, in league with the dark savant from the other night. What spells do we have at our disposal here that could help? We'll do a blades at level four. That's max for that spell. And I think Danny's going to hit him with a big fireball at level four also. Let's see how this goes. Wow, okay, so that's not quite as difficult as I thought. Fireball fizzled, that's terrible. Laser spear. So we'll throw everybody at these guards. What does Lulu have? What spells does Lulu have? We'll do a chilling touch on one of them. We'll try blades again at just level one this time, and we'll do another fireball. That shouldn't have fizzled.
All right, we got them. The battle over. The vaporized bodies of the mysterious guards have left no trace or clues. It is all inhumanly efficient. A small black box with three blinking buttons is attached to the wall. It appears to be patiently awaiting instructions that were presumably lost with the demise of the guards. Oh. Hmm. So we don't know this combination. So somewhere later on we'll probably learn this information. Yeah, there's no way to guess our way through it. Okay, well that was kind of cool. Condemned area. Belcanzor's Magic Emporium. Oh, let's check that out. Inside the shop, the room is empty, its walls bare, and a thin veil of dust cover the floor. You know, let's see. that detect secret on here. Odd that the magic emporium is empty. Nothing. Perhaps it's an hour thing. So it is nighttime. Let's rest. Now that it's actually dark, let's try it again. I seem to remember some of these shops are only open during certain hours. All right, let's rest till it is completely daylight. Try it now. Oh, all right. Well, we'll come back later. Condemned area. Interesting. And yeah, we'll check. Bank and loan closed on holidays. And it's locked. Ooh. I don't think our skullduggery skills are up to up to snuff on that just yet. The great sea of sorrow spans before you like a vast and dense space flattened into the sky, spreading into the far distant horizon as a desolate plain of shimmering ether. Its deep waters chant a thousand silent tales, and its unseen borders but a hint of far distant lands. How universal such a compelling motion, as if behind every veil of boundless unknown lay cloaked, an invisible beacon endlessly calling. Such solace these sights bring, as if a reminder that though the trappings of mortal man be forever enshrouded in a sea of passing discords, he has but to open his eyes that he may bear witness to some greater existence of which he is only a momentary traveler. Well, this, this guy likes to write, doesn't he? Settle Cat says their shop might be elsewhere. Could be. New City Dock and Marina. Settle Cat says that's deep. Yeah, that was some, some deep stuff there, wasn't it? 
Old nets and a few stuffed trophies of gruesome-looking aquatic creatures draped the walls of the small marina. An old monk, notice the spelling, it's because it's a race, not an occupation, Quiet, quietly working in the corner seems so immersed in the block he is carving that he fails to take notice of you. Looking back at the trophies in detail, any thoughts of taking a little dip in the sea are quickly followed by thoughts of being ripped to shreds. The old monk giggles, looks up, and then goes back to his work. On the far wall, you notice an empty trophy plaque, though it is too far to read from here. As you turn back to address the monk, he is standing before you. Thinking of seafaring, are we? Beware the dangers of the deep. Sogheim. So, you see it says truce. So in this one, unless you're allied with certain factions, they're very distrusting of you. Hi-yi. Hi so he's not wanting to talk to us right now. A lonely plaque devoid of trophy hangs on the wall. It reads, Brombadag. Let's look at it. So, with that in mind, let me take a look. Who's got the best diplomacy skills. Zero. 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 Not even an option for, for my bard. Let's see. Did I not put any points in diplomacy? Hmm. We'll have to work on that. Okay, so that's that's our problem. We're gonna have to fix that. Curio Museum, Amazing Oddities. A colorful cartoon of a grinning jester adorns the door of the museum. A metal tongue is protruding from a small hole in the mouth of the jester, and the tongue is in a narrow slot. You discover that the tongue is taut and springy, and when you depress it and quickly release it, it flaps up and down, making an odd twanging kind of sound. If I remember right, like I said, it's been so long, I think there's a coin or something you have to, to put in that that slot to get in there. Sidocat says, what about Claire? Let's take a look at Claire. Diplomacy is not even an option for that, that race or for that class. So, no big deal. We'll level up some. We're seeing things here, like this town is a central hub, so not everything in it is supposed to be solved at once. We'll be coming back here many times. Right now, I'm just sort of seeing everything it has to offer. Sort of mapping the town out, getting a lay of the land. Peering through the window, you witness several large grayish creatures carrying on a conversation comprised mainly of snorts and a low rumbling sound. Soon, one of them begins to get angry, stomping and snorting, as if enduring some gross miscarriage of justice. Then he parades from the room, and the others following at a cautious distance. I think these are the Impani, just from what I remember about the game. The description uh, matches them. So this building might be a place of interest for us. Yep, it is, indeed. So let's see if we can get some information about our mark. Save the game. Let's try to rest up real quick. Let's 
Sado's hit points are just not recovering. So let's do a little heal here. Oop, there we go. Let's see if we can go in here. It is locked. Mm. I don't think we can pick this lock. We'll try. No, no, no. That's solid red. Not even close. All right. We'll come back to the Impony outpost. A vivid red emblem has been attached to this door. So it seems to me like the red emblems are indicative that the savant has an interest in the building. Leaving New City? No, not, not quite yet. New City Library. Another vivid red emblem. Oh, what's this? Miss OG Hermit says, woof. That's right, woof. We have dogs. You stand inside a large courtyard, serene and calm, and it is a welcome change from the otherwise gloomy city. There is an arched gazebo in the center of the courtyard fountain, and within it is housed an ancient statue. So I remember this. The statue has an item in it, but to get to it, you have to swim a... Uh, you know, one step. In at early levels, characters are likely to drown. So let's save the game and see if we can make it. No, we are not there yet. We are not ready for that. So we've got to up that swimming skill a little bit before we can attempt to get to the center of the of the uh, courtyard here. Settle Cat says, "Good Lord, I know, right? It's just like a wade. Like you could see it." Look how deep is that water? That's why I saved, because I had a feeling that was going to happen. We'll see how right I am. I seem to remember that the courtyard holds an item called the Moonstone. Arms of Argus Weaponry Shop. So we're kind of short on weapons and armor, so let's check this out. Inside of the shop is dimly lit and faint outlines can be seen upon the walls where various implements of destruction were once displayed. The store seems quite bare, other than a few scattered crates and some, some open, which are resting on the floor. Tacked upon the back wall are several illustrations of items not immediately identifiable and whose use and purpose is not readily apparent. A large horned creature approaches you, brandishing an ominous sword in a strange barrel-shaped object, waving them in a threatening exhibition of possible conflict. I believe this is an Impani. It is, indeed. Halt. What do you want? This shop is closed permanently. Who sent you? So here, we've got sort of a, a branching point here. We could be honest, and we could say it was Shritus or, the, you know, the Terang. Um, that would probably not be a good a good move. Um, we can try to lie, knowing that he's an Impani and, and knowing the name of one. Let's, let's try that. Rodan. Get out and stay out. He didn't like that answer. The huge creature charges, pushing you out the door. Oh, wonder what happens if we go back in. So Cat says, dude's got a gun. Yes, he does. Halt. What do you want? This shop is closed. So it's going to be the same dialogue. 
who sent you. Okay, so none of these are the answers that invoke a, a unique response. So. Normally, when I've imported my save in the past, I've started with the Umpani on their side. Welcome all, Thess Minster Abbey. So I've never started a game uh, aligned with the with the terrain before. I think this is a, a monk outpost. Though the cathedral lacks the kind of elegance most often associated with a membership of profitable patronage, it nonetheless seems to possess the tranquil reverence that can momentarily soothe the troubled soul. It is empty now, the floor swept clean, and only a slow, deliberate motions of a lone figure standing at the end of the temple serve to break the stillness. The distant priest has given no sign that he is aware of your presence, continuing in his ritual as if no, no other matters held any import. Drawing near the priest, he turns to face you. Welcome, my children. Do you seek healing for the body or guidance for the spirit? Slay not he that cannot hear. Go now and repeat these words to Brother Tashober, who guards the bridge to the holy city of Makarama. Slay not he that cannot hear. Your journey shall be long, but you have taken the first step. Now you must prepare to make the second. Interesting. Oops, go. Oops, I spelled it wrong. Ah, oh, did it again. want to see if uh, nope will you pay 50 gold pieces yes I heard a rumor about a statue a statue in the courtyard the statue has been here since the beginning of time new city is where everyone eventually ends up dread ruler of the galaxies the T Rang are thieving scoundrels. The Impani are above our suspicion. We shall be victorious. So, like I said, lots of factions uh, in this game, and you have to decide. The rule of galaxies. Okay. Holy City of Monkarama, the city of the Holy Word. Slay not he that cannot hear. Let me go ahead and take a picture of that so we don't forget the phrase. Go now and repeat these words to Brother Tashover. Okay. Alright, so now we've sort of got two potential tasks. One of them is to uh, find Brother Tashover, and the other is to find Rodin Loarks. Does he have anything for sale? Holy water, healing, not bad. Res ooh. No, I don't, can't afford that. Alright. Settle catches that's expensive indeed. I can't help but think there's some hidden doors here. Well, maybe not. Uh-oh, 
Oh, it's a monks. Five demented monks. Let's see if we can put them to sleep with the loot. Setter will breathe on them, and Danny's going to go ahead and do a magic missile at level four. So this is where we started. This was the Tirang uh, spot. I saw it, but it looks like I haven't been in here. Hmm, interesting. Let's check this out. The map almost indicates I've not been inside. But pretty sure I have been. Yeah, I've been in here. Okay, I see what it's done. Okay. I guess because that's a, a zone in and in of itself. The Conqueror. Inn and Tavern. Now this sounds interesting. All is quiet as you enter the inn, and it seems you are the only likely customers. The main room is cluttered with junk, and several scratchy paintings hanging askew adorn the walls. Stacks of plates and half-finished meals still remain from prior days, a testament to the general tidiness of the innkeeper. Soon a frumpled, grumpy man makes his way from the back of the messy room. Pardon the clutter, but we don't get many visitors these days. You need lodging for the night, as long as you don't bring any of those filthy trangs with you. But don't just stand there. Come on in. You look like you could use a good round of ale. Just make yourself at home. We're all family here. Now, will that be for two nights or just three? <laughs> Dungor. Let's try his own language. <laughs> Who are you? My name is Dungor. Rumors. Good lord, all these guys want money. I haven't heard I have heard a rumor about arms of Argus. I've heard the black market operates from the arms of Argus. Okay. I've heard that the black market operates from the arms of Argus. Okay. Pony. The Impani are above our suspicion. Let's see. sweeper. Come on. Good lord, I did it again. Alright, so he doesn't 
doesn't have much else to say. Let's see if he's selling anything. Malt ale, huh? Bread rolls. Bunch of bananas. In key. Bunch of bananas. Why not? You never know when this might come in handy. So the in key, if you do buy a room, then you get a little, you, you can use the, the key to open one of these doors, which is basically a guaranteed safe place to rest. Oh good, so these are Gorn. Uh, this is yet another race native to the planet, um, and one that we'll get to know sooner or later. This is the first time we've encountered them in this game. Oh, good. What kind of armor did we find? Looks like leather. I can't remember if Trevi had a bottom. Doesn't look like it, so. Doesn't have any armor. Quilt legging. It's better than nothing, right? this way some ratkin and some turang ooh the seven of those so here's what we're going to do, something a little different. We're going to go ahead and focus the melee characters on the second group in the back. That's the Terang. And we are going to use magic on these seven Ratkin here. First thing we're going to do is try to put them to sleep with a Poet's Loot. I think Sato's going to cast a Blade spell on them. And then Danny's going to hit him with a Fireball. And we'll see, that might make short work of them. I seem to remember there's an NPC Ratkin later named Rats, Ratsputin. I always thought that was funny. So Sato our bearded friend uh, says that he can't get on his Twitch account, so he's just watching this stream on his PlayStation. <laughs> 
All right, so is that all of new? Oh, Palooks, Armory, Mail, and Fine Leathers. All right, let's try to go in. Naked wooden dummies with once carried various suits of armor stand barren in random disarray about the shop. A few old ratted garments of mail and leather droop lifelessly from the walls. It is hardly an enticing display. A poster above the door proclaims, if you don't want to lose it, cover it with palooks. The floor is unswept, covered with, many foot, with footprints of many recent visitors, and a well-worn path leads into the back. Suddenly, a stout-looking creature appears from behind one of the empty dummies and charges to meet you. Ort, I am Palook, armor of New City. This is your lucky day. I have a few remaining pieces which I am sure can be easily fitted to suit your needs. Snortle. Sorry, I don't have more to offer right now, but it seems everyone is preparing for war. Oh. Truce. Who? What can I give him? Some ale, maybe? Does that improve his demeanor any? Appears reserved. He attacks? I thought he was reserved. Paul Luke calls for help. Well, this is not what I expected to happen. Give the man a beer, and he decides to kill you. just should have bought from him let's see how this goes I don't I don't feel good about this one Seto says he's a violent drunk yeah it appears so all right Ashigaru I think that's some sort of samurai a fireball did not affect them Yeah, this is not going to end well. Spear plus two? Yeah, it's going to be bad. Oh, and they're casting fireball. Oh, no. Uh, uh. So it'll be a wipe, I think. And I bet I haven't saved in a minute either. It's going to be super important to get that diplomacy skill up. At the very least, I'd like to take this guy out before they kill me. There we go. It's over. Oh, let's see what the death screen looks like in this game. Well, there isn't one. That's a shame. Oh, yeah. So a little backtracking to do here. I'll have to remind myself to save more frequently. We've been to the Conqueror. I'm not going to go back in there and talk to what's his name at the moment. After all, his beer didn't uh, really help us out and he did it. Must have been really bad. Oh, and golly. I fat fingered that. Oh, we've hit a turn of bad luck. Settlecat says the upside is you have your gold back. That's true. I do have my gold back. All right. One more time. I'm going to try to map this perimeter here. And then I think. It won't be long before I end for the night. I want to get New City mapped out, though. I want to see everything it has to offer. And honestly, I really want to go back to Palooks and um, buy some armor. I think maybe we can, instead of trying to negotiate with him or, or trying to, you know, improve our um, our standing with him, I think maybe he'll just sell to us.
Let's see what happens. You know, if I have charm, I could try to charm him. But if that fails, then he, he's for sure going to attack. All right, let's just... Oh, you've got to truce before you can... Um, I don't have charm, do I? No, I don't. Paluk leaves. All right, so there's not going to be any... Um, Any buying armor right now? I'm just gonna rest that stamina a bit here on on Seto. All right, so we've almost explored the city, I think. Enter his shop, say nothing. <laughs> Steps in the closet, exactly. Like he's totally cool with that. Maybe he's just that kind of guy. So four demented monks. So I think that's it. We've sort of gone through the uh, the whole new city map here. Of course, there is this other exit, which I think leads to Monk Harama, if I remember right. And let's magic missile these guys. So we sort of have our direction on what we're going to do next. Um, so the Impani thing, of course, um, we have to decide our loyalties, right? Are we going to stick with these creepy Terang, or are we going to try to, you know, maybe side with the Impani? Because you can you can backstab, you can betray, and the game really is giving that indication that the Terang are kind of the bad guys. But of course, at the end of the day. I think it's all neutral, right? So, but there is that. There's that lead. And then there's also the whole, um, you know, brother to Shober, road to Monkarama thing, which I think is the logical next step of the, uh, of the quest. Bad guys, it's just a matter of perception. Yeah, it's kind of the idea with this game. Because really, the ending of the last game is, is also very similar to that. Like, you know, the king's a vampire, but is he a good vampire? Do you believe the queen? Do you believe him? Three dark forest monks, four demented monks. I guess we're going back up here. Lulu's going to... Focus on the demented monks, try to put them to sleep. Excuse me. We'll magic missile these guys in the back. Still a little disappointed I didn't find the starter dungeon. I really thought it was on the other side of town, out in the woods, but. Danny says, gotta go, guys. 3 a.m. comes early. Yeah, totally, Danny. Have a good night. Um, I totally get that. We're gonna be ending soon, anyways. You won't miss much.
Thanks for watching, though. Oh, back up, back up. Let's breathe on this guy. Boy, these, these dark forest monks are tough. Oh, that hurt. Alright, so we're going to do this. I'm going to back up here. Trevi's going to fight. We're going to do it like this. We'll try to put them to sleep. I've got one blades in me. Oops, but I want to cast it on these guys. We're going to fireball these fellas here. There we go. Making some progress now. Some sort of potion, okay. I'm curious, that was an interesting looking potion. Let's see what that, oh, we got a level. Sato has leveled up. Let's bump that uh, swimming skill up here. And let's go ahead and pump a bunch into diplomacy. I think we need that. Got a new spell for Sato. Armor plate, bless. See, charm might come in handy. Let's do it. Let's do a charm. All right, that was a good level up. We'll wonder, just another hair here. I just want to see what's tucked away. See, I remember, I remember some outside of the, the city areas. I remember a treasure chest with like a scalp in it and things like that that I'm not seeing. Oh, I should heal. So Sato is going to heal wounds. Level 4 on Kyler. Danny's going to go ahead and magic missile these guys. I like it when the birds fall asleep, they just sleep midair with their wings out. Like this guy right here. You know, he didn't fall to the ground, he's just asleep in the air. You know, there's only so much technology could do in ninety three. This was this was the pinnacle of it. Anybody else leveling? Three night rooks. Danny says, like the others that would fall in the sky. <laughs> or Seto says, like the others that would fall in the sky. Sir, I have played chess. That is not a rook. 
So I do think there is a, a, a breed of birds called a rook. But yes, I've, I've played chess too, and they don't look anything like a, like a castle tower. I'm with you on that. We need some consistency. Still waiting for chess too. So I don't know if you if you remember it or maybe maybe you're too young, but when I was a, a young man, there was a game called Battle Chess on the PC. We're talking 89, 90, you know, old 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 school stuff. And Battle Chess was chess, but it was cool because when you took a uh, another piece, like you'd see the the pawn walk up pull out a sword and actually slay the other chess piece. It was really cool. And for some reason, when I was 11 or 12 years old, that was just the coolest thing for me to see that happen. Saddlecat says, I would love that. You know, it's such an old game and it was so popular. There were dozens of versions. I'm sure you could probably find a, a browser-based version of Battle Chess for free. Free to play. I'm sure it's it's been cloned multiple times. Or we could always play the three-dimensional chess from Star Trek. Which I, I see that somebody actually turned into a game at some point in time. Like you can play Star Trek 3D chess. Eerie Moths. So I think this will be our last fight tonight. After we uh, get through these moths here, we're going to rest on the road and save the game. And we'll pick it back up tomorrow. All right. Eerie moths down. And there's the road in front of us, so this is a perfect stopping point. So tonight, basically, we explored, yeah, Moth, Mothra. We explored New City. Uh, we got the whole perimeter, walked through the whole town, found some places, can't get too far. So we're going to pursue, I think, this um, Brother Toshoba Road to Monkarama Bridge and see what awaits us there. Um, I think that's the game plan going forward. Um, but thanks for watching tonight and uh, checking out this classic, classic game from back in the day. Um, again, we'll play again tomorrow. And... Um, We'll see if we can make it to Monkarama and see what awaits us there. Uh, thanks again, and Seto, I will see you later at Broforce here in just a little over an hour. So take it easy, and until then, have a good night.